Keep all your game as and lost, as and lost. It's all the same as and lost, as and lost. Okay, so what's up guys? That's the traffic condition in Mong Kiara during CMCO time. Crazy, right? Now we are in Dalan Dutama, where this is in between Mong Kiara and Publica. And for the locals here, right? They want to clarify very clearly that okay, this is Mong Kiara, this is Dutamas, but to me, it's only a street away. So one of the biggest problems for the site is that like this access can be pretty tough to come out or go in. We are now in the basement, so all are covered. Uh, it's a very big one, and you can see that it's that conventional column and beam structure, so it can feel kind of overwhelming. But good thing is that this entire car park, right, is one huge basement all together, and you get to access to your respective areas that you live in, regardless which block, right? You can just go to your block and go up straight from there. You don't need to come up to a central area to go around again. It feels like a mall. La. Now we are in the facility deck at the ground floor, so some rough facts, um, 10 acres, a lot of blocks, la. so you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, I think. If you look into the typology, it's low floor, high floor, and mid floor. Based on developer, what I want to do is to design the low rise to be a little bit more premium, so it's lower density, and the biggest build-up is up to 5,000 square feet. Then the high blocks, it's the usual average where 1,000 plus square feet. Lo. Entry price back then was slightly below market, which is like 700 per square feet, la, but now it's going for 1,000. Yeah, so Mon Kiara is already 1,000 per square feet. In the center of everything, there's this pool. This is the ground floor pool, it's pretty rare. So that's the low rise, and facing that's the high rise. It's very difficult to describe right now because it feels very foreign to me. This developer is not a local one. They have a lot of projects in China and Hong Kong. Hence, the treatments to public spaces are very, very different. You can see a lot of palms. Also, the garden design, the landscape designs are a little bit more peculiar in that sense. What I really like so far, it's the massing. If you look into the number of blocks, right, if you base on units, 800 units, wow, a lot less. But then when you come to the side and you put your human scale, your human perspective to things, you don't really see the huge chunk of buildings because the massing is distributed evenly towards all the blocks. At the joint between the floor to the block, right, it's very well softened using landscape treatments and you really feel like every block, right, can easily access the main park area. They all share one, which then makes the facility deck to be so humongous. These uh, received tremendous response earlier because of the very easy entry price. And surprisingly, a lot of owners are actually foreign owners. Where they come from Hong Kong, China, Korean, Japanese, and etc. It's not that surprising as well because Mong Kiara has always been that popular location. If you think about expat moving to Malaysia, right? And you can really see why. La. One thing I really must highlight, there's a lot of upcoming projects in this area. Where where in the opposite, you have Kami, K-A-M-I. Then you have Arte Mong Kiara as well. And the upcoming KL Metropolis. When you think that, yeah, you know what, Mong Kiara is very packed with high rises and it's fully developed already. I am so wrong. Okay, from this perspective, right, you can really see the density of landscape. And to me, I find it very, very exciting because the different trees like towards is always Cambodia, Candinia, the Heaven's Bird, and the usual types of plant species. But when I come here, since it has that international flavor, it's very, very different. From the entrance itself, you will access this huge basement car park. And the benefit of that is that uh, all cars will be covered in one. Number two is that because it's big enough, just like a mall, you are able to plug close to your relevant units. And as mentioned just now, as we were inside, you don't feel the humongous mountains of units. But then when you come up higher, then you're like kind of, ah, this is how it looks like. So before going into the unit, right, something to highlight is the finishing touches for all the common areas element. Like you see a lot of stone finish. Then you have timber finish columns. Then it's very sweet. Then you have the growth line, right? With this stone covering the drains with your landscape. You have all these spaces. 
before going into the main lobby. And the main lobby looks like an art gallery itself. Okay guys, so now we are in Tower H, which is one of the higher level ones. And this is really sweet where one lift serves only two units. Then this lift serves the other two units. So in terms of privacy wise, it's actually very very good. Which means this is one unit, this is one unit. But they share the same common areas in the central areas, which is the refuse chamber right here. And what I first time I see it, it's locked. So I guess every unit owners will have the keys and access to the refuse chamber. So for security purposes, that I like. Then also if you look into the treatments of the ages, so you have steel ones and the age, I think it's because these are used for constructions or maintenance or things like that. So this kind of ages usually all cheap off. But check out the furnishings right, for common areas. It's so luxurious. So glossy, so polished. And today we will be checking out this unit and you can see, wow, they just hot from the oven. And let's go check it out. First thing I like right, is this uh, dual leaf door where when you open it's just one door here. But what's going to be different is that when you need to move around, you can just open up this. It's because of this corner, it's pretty difficult to move things around. Before we proceed further, this is one of the type that we're going to check out today, type B. And there are a lot of variations to it. So the standard size is 1, 3, 4, 5 square feet, 3 bedroom unit. And this is rather weird where you come in from the small little corner here and then you have the living dining the dry kitchen then a wet kitchen and then you have the three bedrooms so you have a common shared bathroom you have a utility space coming straight in right the main thing that i don't really feel is this 2.5 meters entrance right? and as mentioned this corner might be quite difficult to move things around but you are welcome with this amazing view check it out so that's publica already at your doorstep, then you have the Royal Palace, right? Then you have the skyline of KLCC itself. And just nice, you see the weather is so dramatic today. So, a 3 meter ceiling height, and for the weave, it's 4 meters wide. This is the designated dining room, a bit weird, lah. but then this is the actual condition of what was provided by the developer. You have this breakfast station, you have the fridge, you have Tikka oven, then you have the cool and hot here, a two burner, and that will be the wet kitchen. So one thing I really like is the partition of this kitchen space where whatever heavy cooking I do here, it's not gonna affect the main space in the living room or the dining room. Lah. And this is a linear format kitchen where everything is in one straight line along with drawers and everything. So I think it's pretty complete. Lah. Right, so you have that stopper as well. That's nice. Okay. And after you're done with all your washing, this is the access that you can actually throw all your rubbish on. I like that the basin has a window here. Next to it will be this yard space where you can do your washing. That's the utility roof. So it can be a storage space or a maid's room. And it also comes with a maid's bathroom. It's okay lah, but it's just that it's pretty small. It's like a 30mm drop here. So this is to prevent just in case this leaks, right? There's a floor trap over there to contain the water so it will not flood over to the kitchen or this utility space. And it comes with a storage for your water heater as well. Coming up from your kitchen, you have the three bedrooms on this side, pretty direct. And two will be sharing this bathroom. This is the shared bathroom and the furniture is very stone heavy, stone focused. So they are using TOTO for WC and I guess it will be the same. I like they provide the vanity top and everything feels probably hotel-ish. And that's the window that connects to the working area outside. Lah. Something new for me is these kind of details. Lah. This area often the time will be wet. Hence there will be a different treatment or a transition just to prevent this from being damaged by water. But now that's the stone then only you have the door frame. This further prevents this from being damaged. Now. But the termination a bit, yeah, you look at the terminations. It's pretty rare as well that the unit comes with a very nice plaster ceiling altogether. 
and there'll be two bedrooms here one this side sharing that same view of KLCC as well and all the iconic buildings so the bedroom feels in contrast to whatever that's in the living room because it feels more stone, it feels more cold but when you come into the bedroom right it's simple furnish, timber skirting you have this drop here for the utility one thing though, it's not the end of the world but you have this line just because the structure element is there so the beam thickness is not as thick as the wall so you have this line and the windows are not full there's this door stopper that looks pretty amazing <laughs> Moving on the other bedroom, bedroom 2 on this side and this one, unfortunately the window is way smaller but it's still using the same treatment for finishing timber floor, timber skirtings and this is overlooking to the other block In this bedroom there you can really feel the structural elements because it's a high rise hence the structural elements can be a little bit more chunky So these are the columns and you can see that there's the beam in a different size then termination then termination, you can see. So all corners in this room, right, has all these elements of joint things. Hmm. Okay, last of all will be the principal bedroom, and this is the principal bathroom. It's very heavy on stone. There's total furnishings, and there's a bathtub. In this particular market segment and location, right, this is almost mandatory, and it's also by Toto. So the bathroom is very complete, lah very complete so the termination it's kind of peculiar usually we will choose one side but they actually trim it in the center they actually joint it in the center again that's new and little details like this it can get kind of rough la. and i like the groove but at the edge of the termination hmm so this as well and this will be the principal bedroom not your usual wow right because number one the window is not full size but i think it's big enough and the scale of the bedroom is not as big but the layout instead of focusing on bedrooms they make the living room super presentable they have a dedicated partition to your wet kitchen that's nice hence this bedroom i can totally live with it la. but this view is really something else la. that's the new highway this is coming from pj area okay so that's jalan kuching already at this side it's pretty remarkable where you are in the most dense area filled with high rise but you still get to enjoy a lot of greens low densities public buildings and stuff like that very very cool also there's a drop for your utilities and aircon conduit and things like that so this is the wardrobe space yeah there's no walk-in wardrobe but i think it's good enough lah. i think that's all for the unit uh let's go check out the gym right i forgot to check out the gym let's go Okay, we are now at the sky deck where it's open for all just that it's located at the higher floor blocks lah, right? So you have the aqua gym, you have the plunge pool you have some jacuzzis, right? So chill out zones like this it's supposed to be peace and quiet where you can just chill, escape away from the city you can't really have that because you are located in the CBD itself sandwiched between Jalan Duta and DJ Highway and Duke and this and that, right? It's inevitable that you will have traffic noise on the good side is uh, this project is also very close to all the commercial areas that is Solaris so these are the areas where there's a lot of restaurants there's grocers there's your cafes your pubs nightlife still are pretty exciting as well just one comment right it's this kind of age you can see this is the experience of coming to the facility that it's like a game of waving what so in this area, pretty much you get everything and almost everything within walking distance. Almost everything. And that seems to be the main selling point for a project located in Mong Kiara itself. I think that's about it. And it's now time for Sean's take 3 on 3. 3 things I really like. Number 1, definitely. Definitely will be the location. Because it's just one of the most convenient locations altogether. Only short of public transport like LRTs and MRTs and that explains why Mong Kiara has such high density and it's still going on Point number two is the massing If you look into paper, 800 units is going to be very very dense but I like that the architect choose to build it in a different way where you have low floors and high floors and medium floors and all separated by this huge deck of greens and public area and third of all surprisingly would be the entry price 
700 per square feet in Mong Kiara four years ago. So just for perspective, now Mong Kiara area is going for around 1,000. 1,001 is kind of pushing it, about 1,000 per square feet. And there's a lot of transaction going on already. The unit that we just checked out, right, is rented out for 4,500 ringgit. So if you were to look into the returns, right, it's pretty sweet. And again, that's the main reason why people like to buy here. Three things I don't like. Number one is actually the entrance because it's located too close to the junction while turning in. So if a resident here wants to turn out by car to Pabrika area, it's going to be jammed because that road, if you look into the current situation, CMCO time is already so busy. You can only imagine when it's back to normal and school is reopened. Oh. Point number two, it's pretty inevitable because we are in Mong Kiara, so it's easily the highest dense location in the entire Malaysia where it's high rise after high rise after high rise after high rise and it's still going. If you can hear the noise around, right, all the construction and traffic noise, that kind of reflects the prosperity of this location itself. We haven't even included KL Metro Police which has another 12 to 15 blocks to go. And last of all, as we mentioned, the noise from the traffic, from the neighboring construction works, the never ending construction works are to be exact, right? Those are something to take note because if you are looking for peace and tranquility, it's going to be a bit tough because this is a very high traffic area. So what do I think of the project? Do I like it? Yes. As an investor, it just kills me that I didn't grab four years ago. Knowing that it's next to KR Metropolis, just you can look into it, right? There's three upcoming projects all together. Four, in fact, I'm not worried. Five. And I'm not worried at all because there's such demand in this market and it's really because of the attractiveness of the location. Right? And if, the only game changer, if MRT3 loops in, if MRT3 loops in around that location, this would be dynamite. And once again, shout out to Kevin's team right, for showing me around. He's the guy to look for if you're looking for anything in Mong Kiara, right? I'll just put his contact down below. And if you really like this video, like it, share it, and even subscribe for more information like this. Until next time, this is Sean Tan. Ciao.